Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Mitch Hester. I'm the U.S. Sales Manager for TerraSource, Jeffrey Rader. Today's webinar is on our Jeffrey Rader chip sizers. We are, of course, a company of the Hill & Brand Corporation. As you see on the screen, we have several companies involved, Coperian, Rotex, and, of course, Baseball Casket. Dunlop, Jeffrey Rader, and Pennsylvania Crusher is the TerraSource Global Group. That is our marketing arm of these three respective companies. Our chip sizer is, is a machine that was developed for processing oversized chips. And this is an example of before and after the processing of our chip sizer. Of course, this is without any knots or tramp metal involved. In the real world, knots, transitions, bark, rocks, bolts, and other hardware pieces of machinery and dirt is part of the process. And this equipment must be able to process these materials while tolerating these imperfections of real world conditions. Our chip sizers are manufacturing to perform in such conditions. Why do we oversize, process oversized chips? Oversi overs account for between 3 and 10 percent of all total chip production. And nearly all fibers in overs is usable. And the cost recovery in pulp, versus, pulp chips versus boiler fuel is significant. But everyone should do a situational analysis to determine the benefits of processing the overs, oversized chips. This 3 to 10 percent is real money. People, many people in the industry are presently selling or burning this pulpable wood as boiler fuel, and this is literally akin to burning cash money. Oversized chips do not completely cook and are either burned along with entrained chemicals or recirculated. The pins and fines result in lower tear and burst strengths and clogged digester screens, and it increases in coarse particle content, which leads to the increased tensile energy absorption, the T. What is the job of an oversized chip processor? The job is to reduce oversized chips to, prefer, to preferred size, which we call accepts chips with a minimal of pins and fines. We do that by fracturing the chip along the fiber lines to reduce shear perpendicular to the grain which produces the fines. The chip sizer operates at about one-third the speed of your typical wood hog. This allows the chip to be fractured along the fiber line without grinding the material, which that's what can, creates the production of the fines. Jeffrey Rader chip sizer was the first true no-knife re-chipper that was pioneered back in 1996 as a result of an industry concern over high maintenance cost of conventional re-chippers. At first look, it does look like a typical wood hog, but the operating principle is similar to a wood hog. The chip sizer incorporates several special features and components. For example, the chip sizer hammers also allow the unit to operate at much lower speeds than a hammer mill. It actually operates about one-third of the speed of a traditional hammer mill, which operates around 1,200 RPM. This allows for a softer touch, as we say, to the chips to minimize the creation of chips and fines. This, along with other patented components, permits the chip Jeffrey Rader chip sizer to reduce oversized chips at unheard of efficiencies. The technical advantage is minimal downtime. The large feed opening eliminates in-feed plugging. The access door permits fast and easy servicing. The chipping hammers reduce downtime. And there are no knives that require sharpening and the metal trap minimizes the damages from tramp metal. The chip sizer produces accepts from oversized chips by the lower tip speed, as I mentioned previously. And as you see by the hammer, the redesign hammer is a double pinned hammer. This allows for a relief in the hammer as it strikes the material against the breaker bars, and this, this minimizes the production of the pins and fines. The grates, as you see, is a sharpened sweep angle grate. These grates, if you look at the diagram, uh, the front section there, you see the grates are closer together. Most of the time, the, the, the first section of the grates are a smaller 
uh, spacing as opposed to the discharge area. This allows evacuation of the material quickly so it doesn't revolve around and around the circumference of the rotor creating fines. Today's processes demands highest quality of raw materials to function at peak levels of productivity and quality, and the chip size distribution must meet process requirements. These results can easily be achieved in lab using a variety of available equipment solutions. However, the real world conditions must be considered. The acceptable fiber is different for a lot of, a lot of different mills. You have to, of course, do the testing at our facility with your your material, we will set up different screen grade arrangements in the machine to produce whatever size, the acceptable size that you deem necessary for your operation. The performance we can expect from this technology is the results of numerous installations processing hardwood and softwood and show a percentage of oversized chips processed to acceptable chips is typically in the range of 85 to 95%. This value is so high that many of the producers are eliminating screening after the chip size are in feeding directly to the accepts belt. I don't know of any facility uh, in the country, and we have over 200 chip sizers in the field that actually do screening after the chip sizer. Everything is within tolerances to where the the material is discharged onto the accepts belt. This is also applicable to both hardwood and softwood. Normally the hardwood oversized accepts are a little lower than the, the pine just because of the nature of the beast, so to speak. Most of our equipment, the chip sizers, have been installed as a retrofit kit taking out the uh, existing knife slicers. As you can see with the retrofit, this, this particular facility was um, the knife slicer was taken out, taken out in one day, one Saturday, uh, after some shoot modifications. And uh, the discharge area was modified somewhat, but it was done within uh, one working day with a small maintenance crew. The infeed design is very critical in all applications with wood hogs or chip sizers. As you can see, on this infeed design, all the material needs to enter the machine on the downward cycle of the hammers. Uh, in this particular design, the rotation is counterclockwise. So the infeed conveyor, we require or ask that it be a minimum of four feet from the top of the pulley down to the entrance of the rotor. This will allow the material to, to gain uh, terminal velocity and enter the hammer circle without popcorning back up through the chute, as we say. We have several models. We have five models of chip sizers, which um, range from our small 30 CS that does two tons per eight tons per uh, hour up to our Model 56 that can do up to 64 tons per hour. Uh, keep in mind that with these ratings, this is the tonnage rates per hour is in direct relation to the size of the material, the access material that you want. Uh, the smaller the spacings uh, of the screen grade area, of course, the throughput is going to decrease. Our maintenance, our recommended grates and hammers, we need to inspect those quarterly and change yearly, but actually the grates and the hammers last more than twice their recommended life. Uh, we've actually had uh, chip sizer hammers and grates last uh, as much as 13 years in one instance. As it was a small chip sizer um, running about eight tons per hour. They actually ran the grates and the hammers for 13 years before they replaced them. But of course that was a very clean operation, uh, small tonnage rates. But uh, you can, I, I would recommend replacing the grates and the hammers at least once every two years, which is much more inexpensive than the sharpening of knives and uh, replacement of knives in the traditional knife slicers. 
The chip sizer is very, very reliable. Um, most of our customers say they just plug it in and, and walk off and forget it, which is, is pretty much the, the uh, truth there. The consistent performance over the entire recommended life of the grates and the hammers are without question. The large feed opening eliminates the in-feed plugs. And we also have a section in the back of the machine that uh, gathers the tramp metal. As the tramp metal enters the hammer circle, the material that has been sized and it goes back up into the area of the trap metal department, and it's kind of like a um, a pillow. So when the, the metal comes back around, it's slung into the back area and kept there, and it reduces the damage of the hammers or the rudder and the screens. We have a demonstration and development center. Uh, it's still in process now. We're adding more and more equipment for testing. We always ask that uh, material is shipped to us uh, to run a variety of tests uh, on your particular material. Everyone's material is different from facility to facility, and we can do it there uh, and ask that you even witness it. As you see in this in this diagram or this picture, uh, we have the little 30 chip sizer or wood hog. We change the hammers and grates accordingly, but we have a um, air takeaway type system that's also beneath the hog. This also helps us do finer and finer uh, materials such as uh, grinding with, uh, for a wood hog application, grinding material down to a quarter of an inch. It assists in evacuating the screen grate area. The, the material is gathered within this uh, compartment and then taken out and sized. Here you see the Jeffrey Raider vibrating feeder and C1 belt conveyor and the rack and storage for the hammer mill crusher. You have any questions? While you guys are thinking about questions, I, I do want to make uh, another comment or two. The, when you compare the, the cost of operation of a traditional knife slicer as opposed to a chip sizer, you're actually, you're probably spending about $125,000 to $150,000 on maintenance on a traditional knife slicer. Uh, the maintenance cost, if you replace the hammers and grates in a chip sizer, is going to be uh, roughly, if it's a mid-sized chip sizer, you're looking at maybe $30,000 a year. So the downtime alone would take care of those type of uh, cost occurrences. And it's much, much more maintenance friendly than the knife slicer. Well, please feel free to contact me. You have my phone number, my email address. I'd be glad to answer any questions. And we have, we have uh, representatives, our manufacturers reps in the areas across the country. And I can provide you with on-site visits to answer any questions and look at your facilities and see uh, uh, what your needs would be for the chip size. I thank you again for attending.